Joe Biden is one of the leading authorities on nuclear arms control in the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and was the point man for the ratification of SALT II. Biden co-authored the first major crime bill in more than a decade. On the Judiciary Committee, his dramatic challenges to the Reagan nominations for federal judges and the Attorney General angered many conservatives. If there were anything in that regard he might have to work on a little bit, uh, it's to uh, not uh, lose any of his enthusiasm, which he generates in speeches and so forth, and in the clips that come from uh, his speeches. Uh, but to uh, emphasize perhaps a little more uh, a, uh, uh, a sort of uh, uh, elder statesman presence, if you can. Uh, you know, it, uh, people love enthusiasm here but they want to be sure that it's uh, well reasoned uh, and uh, that is as much a product of demeanor as it is uh, the exact words that uh, you say. I think in Biden's case I th he probably prides himself on, uh, on being someone who is consistent and willing to speak his mind but willing to disagree with the, with the electorate tell them when they're wrong. When I spoke to labor leaders and said look you got to join the 20th century you are focusing on the wrong things. Productivity is very important. Now for a Democrat who has labor support to go before, like I did uh, just 10 days ago, 2,500 building trades people and tell them what's wrong with labor um, was viewed as being brash. Well, I'm a friend of labor. I'm a friend of the black community. Why should I not be honest with them for our own sake? I'm a great admirer of this man and the work that he has done in the United States Senate. And wish you well in your potential quest to be our party's nominee in 1988 for vice president. <laughs> it would be very hard for me to go out and make the case for my president that I um, had strong disagreement with. It'd be a hard thing for me to do. Um, and I don't criticize those who do because you must be a team. Um, so I, I, I would not recommend that anyone pick me for vice president. <laughs> he, he makes a Kennedy-like speech. He invokes uh, the return to Camelot, uh, reminds the party of, uh, of uh, its better days, and uh, in, in effect is kind of a Kennedy without the burdens of, uh, that Ted Kennedy would have brought to the, uh, the 1988 campaign. When I was 25 years old, I stood by the railroad tracks, my sister Valerie, in my hometown of Wilmington, Delaware, and openly wept with thousands of other Delawareans as Robert Kennedy's funeral train passed slowly by. But the cynics believe that my generation has forgotten all of this. They believe that having reached the conservative age of mortgage payments, pediatricians' bills, and saving for our children's education, that we are ripe for Republican picking. But they've misjudged us. Just because our political heroes were murdered does not mean that the dream does not still live buried deep in the broken hearts of tens of millions of Americans. For ladies and gentlemen, we have always been a party of passion. We have always been a party that has cared greatly. If Joe Biden wants to say, I am heir to John Kennedy, better go back and read Kennedy's speeches. Uh, I was for Kennedy in 1960. I'm always for the candidate who campaigns on curing the missile gap. You got to go back and read the uh, uh, Kennedy's inaugural address. The only people who today comfortably, warmly quote Kennedy's inaugural address, go anywhere, pay any price, bear any burden to assure the survival of liberty in our lifetime, now we're summoned to a long twilight struggle. All that Cold War rhetoric are Republicans. John Kennedy understood the American character better than most. I mean, when John Kennedy sat there in 1961 and said, we're going to be in the moon by the year 1970, he didn't have any idea how to get there. None. 
but he did understand the American character. He understood that we respond to challenge. And that's the John Kennedy that awakened my interest. Can I rank them first just to put them in order? Hart's probably first, Cuomo's probably second, and if you agree with that, you'd probably have to say Biden is third or close to it. Um, he, is, he is probably more of a middle of the road and more of a pragmatist than, than Cuomo is. Ideologically, I'm not sure, vis-a-vis -vis Hart and Biden, I'm not sure it's going to be ideology as much as style. If you talk to Biden and his people, they would argue that Biden as a speaker and as a candidate is far more effective than Hart. What has put Biden high in the, in the speculation, essentially, aside from his own activity, is the speech he's been giving for the last two or three years about essentially what's been wrong with the party and what the party needs to do. But it's more what's wrong with the party than laying out a blueprint uh, for, for the time after 1988. And the test of these people is going to be which one can make it, uh, uh, which candidate can present a blueprint for the future, because politics really is, campaigns really are about the future, not about the past, ordinarily. I am uh, dealing almost exclusively now with the governance issue of uh, going to women and men uh, who have thought a lot about these issues. Said, Look, this is what I think. This is the direction I want to take the country. Do you think it makes sense on trade, on foreign policy, on domestic policy, on social policy? Um, and that's where I'm spending all my time now, because if you were to run, you're not going to have the luxury of thinking about those things. Since I figure Hart is the favorite, and he's no better than, say, six to one, uh, Joe Biden is in the 12 to one, 15 to one category, along with some two or three others. But uh, a 15 to 1 shot can become even money overnight uh, by doing well in Iowa. And it's just, and I say doing well, or perceived to being to doing well uh, as doing well. Gary Hart uh, got, what, 15% in, in Iowa, and suddenly he was a star.